This video is sponsored by Elgato. What is happening? What is going on? What's wrong with you? Don't look at me like that. Welcome to this very special once-off video that I am putting together for you guys. <laughs> Thanks to our pals at Elgato, I've been able to successfully stream for three years now. Rebecca. Fuck you. But today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to stream. Today's video is gonna be quick. It's gonna be fast paced. It's gonna be efficient. I wanna give you guys the quick version, the straightforward version to get you up and running ASAP. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to stream with a single PC or laptop and give you some tips and tricks that I can think of business owners, gamers, musicians, whatever you are, streaming can be an amazing tool for growth. After that, I'm going to teach you guys how to stream with two PCs, just like I do. I'll give you guys a rundown on the different options for dedicated PC streaming and how to do it. My goal is to just be as straightforward as possible, smash out the how to throw in some troubleshooting that I had to do and get to the fucking point. Let's go. Single PC laptop streaming. Here it is. Okay. Download Streamlabs OBS. If you want to use OBS studio, that's between you and God, but listen to my face when I tell you that Streamlabs has been an absolute treat for me since day one. When you open Streamlabs, you can link it to your YouTube, your Twitch, your Facebook, wherever you want to stream, it connects you automatically. This is an alternative to using a stream key. If you want to use a stream key, go to the site you're streaming from and look for the stream key. I don't know where it is. Just look through your settings. Don't be a baby. It'll be there somewhere. Copy it, come back to Streamlabs, go to settings, stream, stream to custom ingest, put in where you're streaming to, YouTube, Twitch, all that, and paste the key, boom. Done. You're ready to stream. But first, let's mess with some settings. General, don't touch it. Stream, it's already done. Output, here we go. Keep it simple. You can go advanced when you learn a bit more, but for now, I'm just getting you up and running. Video bitrate is important for your stream to look nice. You can do your own research for exactly what it means, but basically the higher the number, the clearer the image. Calculate your capabilities by going to bitratecalc.com. Put in your internet upload speed, resolution output for the stream, frames per second, and boom, you get a range. Just set your bitrate to the middle of that range, and then you're done with the most annoying part of the puzzle. Set your encoder to hardware NVENC, NVE, NVE and C. Using this hardware option will pull from your uh, graphics card a little bit to assist and take some weight off your CPU while you're streaming. If your stream runs bad when you're uh, when you're playing games, you can try switching it back to software, but generally this is the way to go. Click video and set your base canvas, which is whatever your PC is outputting right now. I don't have a 4K monitor or anything, so I'm just running at 1920 by 1080. Then set your output to 1280 by 720. Why shouldn't you output at 1920 by 1080? Basically, I can assume that you'll have a tiny audience when you start and Twitch prioritizes larger audiences. So sometimes your viewers won't have the option to view your stream at a lower resolution, particularly during high traffic periods uh, of streaming. So people with slow internet who can't view streams at 1080p won't be able to view your stream. You'll just be limiting your viewer base. Set FPS to 60 because anything below that is cancer on my eyes. Now we're ready to stream. On your screen, you have scenes, sources, and mixer. The scenes are what you see, the sources are the different assets inside the scene, your desktop, your webcam, an image, whatever you put in there, and the mixer is the mixer. It's your sound. First, set your desktop audio to your desktop, although it's probably done by default. Set your mic to your mic and now people can hear you. If you want to hear what people hear, click the cog next to the mic, click properties, turn audio monitoring to monitor only, and you'll hear how your mic sounds. It will be slightly delayed, but that's fine. It's only delayed for you right now. When it comes out, it won't be delayed. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> if you're happy and you know now that it's working, click it to monitor off and you're good to go. You can also just mute it when you want the freedom to speak without people hearing you. Rename your scene to mainstream or something default. Go to your sources and add a display capture and rename it to desktop and then apply it or click go or whatever and, and and, and boom, it should be automatic. If you have multiple screens, you might have to set the one you want, but it's done. Okay, done. Add a webcam. Same deal, add a source, video capture device this time. Select your webcam and put it in there. Make sure to adjust your webcam settings and then to deactivate and activate the webcam so that the, so that it resets to the new settings and frame rate. Don't know why this is. Sometimes webcams just do that. After you've set your settings, it won't actually activate it until you deactivate it and turn it back on. Don't know why. Don't unplug it and plug it back in because that will fully reset it. It's just, just getting rid of the source and bring it. I'm talking too much. Grab a cute looking transparent border or make one in Photoshop. Draw a square, remove the background, export as a PNG, not as a JPEG, you moron. Throw it in as a source by adding image. Hold Alt to crop the webcam on the fly to fit the image. Make sure the image is on top, the board is on top. Position it and you're ready to stream. Want to have some fun? Duplicate the scene. Change the duplication to big face. Change the shape of your webcam to be larger. Go settings, hotkeys, set mainstream to four or one or nine or whatever you want on your numpad. Set the other to five, I guess. Go to scene transitions by clicking the cog on scenes. Add a cut transition. Add path between all and all as a cut. Now you hit these two numpad buttons and you can switch seamlessly between those two scenes on the fly. 
do this for a cover image, do this for a stream starting soon screen, hotkey them, and you've got a nice little round robin of scenes to move between. You're done. Go live. You can now stream with your single PC or laptop. You're done. It's over. How long was that? Five minutes? <laughs> Easy. Now let's talk about dual PC streaming. A little harder. Why on God's green earth would anybody want to do this? Have all the fuss of running two PCs, often having two keyboards and two mouses, mice, cluttering your desk, having to do endless troubleshooting and, and put in for me what was days just to get the stream running. Why would you do any of this? Because it's fucking slick, that's why. If one PC is doing the work and the other PC is just focused on streaming, you can guarantee your stream is running smooth and looking great. In my early days of streaming, even with a beefy PC, some games just don't communicate well with streaming software. You have to limit the uh, game frame rate to match the streaming frame rate. I usually limit it at 60, so it's fine. You have to mess around with V-Sync. Sometimes it needs to be on, sometimes it needs to be off. 90% of the time, you have to bring the settings of the game down just to guarantee that the stream won't suffer any frame rate losses or, 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 or sync issues. Some games, the medium and Horizon Zero Dawn spring to mind, are just not optimized for streaming, or at least single PC streaming. I would have to run them on their lower settings just to get it to work. And I have a decent PC. So the game is running fine in front of me, in front of my eyes, I'm playing it. And then I look over to the streaming software and it's like just framey and broken. A dual PC setup, AKA a, a dedicated streaming PC, ensures that if the game is running on your main PC, it's running on your stream. Whatever you're seeing, they're seeing. First thing you need is two PCs. Here's one I prepared earlier. Remember the second PC, your streaming PC, doesn't need to have as much beef as your as your 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 first PC, your, your your main PC. It's just running the stream. A decent graphics card and a solid CPU will get you where you need to go. Here are your two options, external capture card or internal capture card. External, like the Elgato HD60 Plus Pro is amazing. It's cheap, it's reliable. It took very minor troubleshooting from me and it's also great for console streaming. This you can obviously do with a single PC streaming setup up as well. Just a quick note on that. When you do add the HD60 into your stream, the external capture card into your stream, name it PS5 or whatever console you're using, but make sure before it's active, you find the HDMI settings on your console and turn off HDCP or turn it on. I can't remember whichever one it isn't by default. If you don't do this, it will interfere and you won't see anything. If you don't see anything, turn that off, turn it on. It will fix your problem. Just troubleshoot a little bit. I have to do it on both my PS4 and PS5. I think it's turn off. It'll I'll, Whatever I put on the screen right now will be the what you need to do. Also find the PS5 scene that is now in your mixer and set the audio to monitor only. That means you hear the console through your PC headphones and the audience will hear it through your desktop audio source. Then all of your audio can be muted via the desktop audio in the mixer. That doesn't limit your ability to mute the PS5 alone either that'll still work i just think it simplifies everything back to dual pc streaming exact same deal as the console take the hdmi cable from your main pc or at least the hdmi cable that goes from your main pc into your main screen take that hdmi and put it into the in part of your elgato hd60 get an hdmi cable and plug it into the out of the HD60 and the other end into your main screen. And then plug the USB into the streaming PC. The signal from your main PC goes through the capture card, sending it to your screen for you to see and to the streaming PC via the, uh, uh, the USB uh, for you to display. Just like with the console at a video capture device, not desktop, you're no longer capturing your desktop display. You can still have the desktop display there, just make sure it's beneath the video capture device so it doesn't have visual priority. Set the video capture to your Elgato capture card and rename it main PC or whatever you want. Boom, you have visuals. On your main PC, set your audio output to the capture card and then just like with the console capture, click the audio settings of your main PC in the mixer and set it to monitor only. That's it, you're ready to go. Internal capture cards are exactly the same, except there's no USB. The capture card is connected directly to your motherboard, either by you or by a, a PC professional. Having it go straight to the motherboard adds speed. I myself had my local PC shop, PC DIY in Box Hill, install it for me because I have no idea what I'm doing and Elgato sent it to me for free and I wasn't sure if they'd send me another one if it broke. I got the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II and boy, I'll tell you what, it took a while to get it going. You should know that Elgato have a really good phone support system, customer service thing. It may take a bit for them to get to you, but after reinstalling my own BIOS and, and, and messing around with settings, it was a far easier fix than I realized. Launching my PC and, and changing a handful of settings in the startup menu is what eventually got me going, got me working. The great thing about an internal capture card is that it's faster, it's crisper, it makes your display look exactly like it does for you. The viewers will see exactly what you see. And just like with me, your viewers will just, they'll be shocked by how good it looks. No lost frames, no resolution drops, no issues, just fast, efficient, 
streaming. You will end up with two pairs of headphones and have all your webcams and audio running into the streaming PC, but this doesn't usually bother people who focus strictly on streaming. I record our podcast from the main PC, so I have to plug everything from the streaming back to the main PC to do the podcast and then plug it back into the streaming PC to do the streams and record videos, but you know, whatever. With the added feature of a mouse and a keyboard splitter so I can change my mouse and keyboard between PCs with the click of a button, my stream has never been smoother. I do, however, have a wireless keyboard on my desk so I can still use my numpad for hotkeys when the main keyboard is attached to the main PC. You're ready to rock. Get in there. Make some video highlights to play as your stream start. Add them as a media source. Mess around with voice plugins, reverb and such. Just have some fun. I know by trying to make this video as quick and efficient as possible, I've skipped over a bunch of things. But the thing is, when you get in there, just mess around. Just have some fun. Click some stuff. See what comes up. It's the best way to learn how to stream is to do it. Watch my video. Thank you so much. But stop watching videos. Go do the work. You'll work it out. I'd like to thank Elgato for sponsoring this video. And I hope you all have a great day.